Hey. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's how I feel. Yeah. Hey. It's episode... 88. 88. Alex and Jim analyze. analyze Billy Joel lyrics. And you know, there's 88 keys on a piano. That's right. And the only other thing I know about that number is that uh, white supremacists use it as code for uh, Adolf Hitler. Do they? Yeah. Why? Do you know why? Um, it's uh, H is the eighth letter in the alphabet. Oh. And 88 uh, corresponds to Heil Hitler. Oh. Yeah. Good night, everybody. <laughs> so uh, keep an eye out. Sounds pretty fun. Yeah. It's good to know that stuff right now since there's the resurgence. Yeah. Of these dinguses. That's what I say. I say uh, Nazis are dinguses, is what I say. It's a bold I, stance that you've been criticized for in the past. Yeah, I, I don't like them. I mean, you're going to alienate your audience. <laughs> <laughs> so sad. Next week, half. Our listenership is cut in half. We're like, oh, no. They're like, oh, I assumed this is a white supremacist podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shite. Hey, Ooh. so uh, first, I want to ask you this. Famous Last Words is the song you chose. It and did. I know it was early on in the episode to bring it up. So my apologies. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, did you pick it because... We were chatting a little bit last week about Billy Joel. Again, very jarring for people who regularly tune in, but we were chatting. Sure. We they don't need that. Um, did you pick it because we were talking about his, the frustration that probably led to him eventually being glad he doesn't write songs anymore? Um, I mean, it's certainly emblematic. Yeah. I picked it because it mentions Labor Day. Oh, okay. And it had been Labor Day. And it had been, and uh, now the sales are happening. So it all feels very Labor Day, end of summer themes. Yeah, it's a good and, song. Uh, and because I knew we definitely hadn't done it. Yeah. <laughs> Which is now my only criteria, really. Well, fun, interesting to me that you picked that because I've been thinking, oh, I want to get back to River of Dreams to pick a song off of there. Um, so when I pick my song, I will pick a song from River of Dreams. We've hit that album more than I thought we would have. Yeah. Yeah, Surprise. just kind of the same. Surprise. I was like, oh, we did. Of course, we talked about River of Dreams, the little tune that you love so much. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I believe you hate that song, right? Isn't that I hate that song. Yeah. Um, I like Shades of Grey. Yeah. You like the middle part live, though, right? Isn't the middle part of... River Dreams Great, where he picks a different classic R&B song to do. Oh, and jam it in the middle there. Yeah, that's fun. That's just, the part where I'm always like, oh, just do this song. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, didn't like it when I was a kid because I was such an absolutist as a kid. I didn't like it when another artist did another artist song for whatever reason. It bothered me. Oh. Um, when they jam it in the middle, though, like that, and they would make a little mashup. Yeah, I always thought that was like a magic trick. See, and I should have thought that too. <laughs> but instead, what I would think is, hey, that's not yours. I hated <laughs> cover songs for that reason, for sure. Yeah. And whereas really, cover songs like The Great Miley <laughs> Cyrus just nails it with cover songs right now. In general, you, I love what she does. Yeah, you can, I mean, many, many times... Yeah, they are a revelation. Yeah, it was something I else um, wrote down. Oh, I wanted to. Jimmy Fallon's in trouble. Yeah, and I was reading about why he's in trouble. It seems so dumb. It seems like are people discovering that Jimmy Fallon is a guy, you know, a person? Because he's maybe yeah. not the greatest person, but it seems like he's in trouble for being a person. I didn't. I don't know. You know if he's in trouble. It definitely seems like people are complaining. Yeah. But it's a lot of um Sue, my our journal our producer slash journalist pointed out that it's uh all hearsay, really. It is. It is. Um, it also, you know. 
Yeah, and also I've always the fa- if so I understand Seth Meyers is a pretty good boss, right? Right, He's a pretty good, great boss. Well, you're lucky then because a comedian yeah. should be in charge of anything. Yeah. So when it works out, great. So if your comedian boss is quirky and a little weird sometimes, great. You're a comedian. Yeah, I mean, I can't speak to the specifics of any of the stuff. Yeah, you've never worked on that show, and it's fine. I've never worked on that show. You you know, you hear what you hear. Yeah. But, I, you know, there have been other people I've heard terrible things about and then had great experiences with. Yeah. And vice versa, people who have, you know, sterling reputations, and then you work with them, and you're like, oh, no, that's yeah. a monster. Yeah. So, so- reputations are... Uh, illusions yep and who you know it all depends on who gets to create the illusion that day yeah and so many people get mad at celebrities because they're like i saw them having lunch and they wouldn't have a 40 minute conversation with me right dick (laughs) yeah yeah so anyway i found that kind of amusing because you see his name pop up and then you look at it and it's an absolute i believe the term is nothing burger yeah pretty true and you know i i think you can also get on a slide yeah. where it's like he got in trouble for rubbing trump's hair and now every time somebody wants to write something about him it has to be that he's in trouble yeah or he made a bad call or bad judgment it's yeah. you know that became the character true for, for reporting on him like oh he messed up yep and every time you write about Letterman, you got to write about him being a legend. Yeah. You don't write about his affair. Right. <laughs> so, I, who... yeah, you don't write about it as a affair. You don't write about the fact that between commercials, he didn't talk to you and all that stuff that was also true. Right. You don't write about Carson the alcoholic. You write about Carson the legend, you know? Yeah. You don't write about Conan O'Brien the depressive. <laughs> yeah. Right. I'm uh, just the funniest guy in the world. Yeah, you don't, you know, you don't talk about. Seth yeah, Myers. it's really you got to watch that first article. Yeah, you don't talk about Seth Meyers killing all those hobos. You talk about him being hilarious. Yeah. Talk about how clean the streets were afterwards. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and he, he did it at the behest of Giuliani back in the day. That was part of the plan. That's how you. That's why it was. It was the broken windows program. It was part of that. <laughs> <laughs> What else did I write? Uh, oh, yeah, this, there's an M M&M store in Times Square now. That's right. Uh, and before we go too much further, I'm so sad you're not on TV right now to talk about Peter Navarro. Oh, so great, dude! That is heartbreaking that you don't get to just go all in on Peter Navarro. God, Peter that- Navarro on Giuliani when that was going on. Yeah, it, it's a hundred things. The only consolation is that there will be a hundred things whenever we do come back. Yeah. We might come back in the middle of a televised Trump trial. True. Which would be a delight. Peter Navarro, real quick, gave this little dumb press conference because he got found guilty of contempt, or I believe that. Contempt of Congress. Contempt of Congress, which I, it because he did that is why he got found guilty of that. That's what happened. Right. Yeah. And in his dumb little press conference, he said, he goes, you guys were wearing masks. You had thermometers. I'm not paraphrasing much, by the way. This is literally what he said. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He had thermometers. You got the <clears throat> vaccines. I helped do that. <laughs> and now look at this. Uh, which is funny because, you know, everybody's done that. A guy cheats on his wife and goes, yeah, but I work hard. You're like, okay. Oh, yeah. Doesn't have a thing to do with the other thing. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And the worse the trouble is for these people, the sillier. <laughs> like, uh, oh, God, what was it? There was something uh, after the Trump documents thing was going on. He apparently they were like, oh, Trump instructed this guy to move the boxes. And they're like, oh, so you can't even instruct an employee anymore? <laughs> what? The hell? What? No. You can't, well, you can't send an email? Yeah, if the email says kill my wife, you can't send that email. No, 
not supposed to send that email. No. Oh. Or if you do, put some other stuff in it so it looks full. Yeah, exactly. That's the important part, isn't it? That's the important thing. People writing emails. You can't just lead with that. Oh. That's hey, true. how's it going? I heard you got some rain. Would you kill my wife? Don't, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Respond. No, no rain. Yes to the other thing. <laughs> Here's a funny picture of a cat. Yeah, see? Yeah. I think, you know, in retrospect, emails should have exclusively been for ants. Like for your funny aunt, then that would have been fine. Yeah. And I don't think you should be able to send the same one to more than one person. Yeah. Grouping. Don't do that. Yeah. I Although I will say, and then I'll get, this is wonderful to share, and then we'll get into this. I was part of an accidental chain with hundreds of comics I don't know. And it was glorious. Oh, yes. I think this has come up before. Oh, I don't know. Maybe it was a booker who had sent this email during the pandemic stuff shut down about classes he was teaching online. Aha. He was obviously trying to make money, but he, instead of blind uh, emailing it to everybody, there was just this giant list of comics. And this hot roasting of this guy was, you know, people saying like, oh, you're teaching classes and how to underpay your middle and stuff like that. Right. Uh, and leading to one comic who went, hey, I'm not joking. If I ever see you, I'm punching you in the fucking face. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, it was so great and I didn't see anything to, but I enjoyed it because it was like well I don't want to I've been on that train before I years ago you and I were on a e an email exchange that went super south and I have fond memories I just don't want to be part of it <laughs> it was oh, um, the toad if you remember Ooh, it's a striking a distant chord yeah it, and it should be the most distant of chords because okay. it's so long ago, but it involved Paul was involved. What? Yeah. Paul got kicked out and created a fake email pretending to be someone else and got back involved in it because he was mad and being a, a troll. Yeah. And he pretended to be a different old friend of ours. Oh. Uh, that's fantastic. I do remember it very fondly. Was so stupid. <laughs> so, so nothing dumber than old arguments. Yeah, they're really hilarious. Every now and then, man, Paul would knock those out of the park. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. being so petty to come on with a fake email and being really, and the things he was saying is, I'll just say the name because nobody knows him. He was pretending to be Jason from <laughs> college. If you remember Jason, I remember Jason. That's who he was pretending to be. Fantastic. Oh, um, yeah. Paul did great because he would catch you off guard because you couldn't believe anyone would be that petty. And yeah. then there he was, and you're like, wow, I got to almost respect it. Yep. But also, super, that was where he would channel some of his worst but and funniest instincts. Yes. So less, uh, I don't know, kind of as a black hole. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. His best comedy was concentrated in the least usable places. <laughs> <laughs> you can't build a career. <laughs> yeah. But yes. I, uh, to my grave, I will say that is funny. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Oh, my Lord. So you picked famous last words. You know what? Oh, good segue. Yeah, yeah, right? Actually, that, again, we never do that, so it's surprising. <laughs> uh, you know what's funny? This song is so poppy. Yeah. The tune is so disposable. Nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with it. A good melody, as always. Yeah, but listening to it, I'm like, man, you can almost hear he's just about done. Yeah. I mean, it 
partly because the song is last words and it's a, kind of about closing up shop. Yeah. And also partly because like, oh, there's nothing. There isn't that extra thing. Nope. That makes it a good song or a great song. It's just there. Yeah. I don't think he's inspired by anyone. I don't think he's trying to like, oh, you know, I was thinking back to how, you know, Waylon Jennings would or whatever. It's nothing. There's nothing. No. Which is fine. But just sort of an older guy kind of asking questions. Yeah. Speaking of which, I'll just share this. Re- um, you know the song Laughter in the Rain by Neil Sadaka? Yes. Um, Billy Joel told a very funny story. I've been watching Billy Joel answering questions. Oh, he great. Does, he, does, he, does, he has done a lot of Q&A. He told a story about um, writing... Um, uh, is it moving out? I think it is. And he wrote the song and he thought he had an original tune and he plays his original version, which was, and Anthony works in a great, and he, and is one of his, I can't even do it. Cause I'm trying to hear the song and <laughs> right. finds out later he's written lyrics to the tune of laughter in the rain by Neil Sedaka, <laughs> which is a, a terrible song. <laughs> It's not great. And he, I, he said, I didn't want to lose these lyrics, so I had to find another tune, which I think is a unique problem he had. Isn't that funny? That is very funny. I wonder how often that comes up for artists. It must happen constantly. It's I mean, certainly it happens when you are writing jokes. Yeah. And you're like, aha, great joke that I now remember I heard Jim Gaffigan say three years ago. Right? And all the time. Jim Gaffigan and Louis C.K. both did a bit in fairly recent specials and within the last 15 years uh, where it was about people being impatient with cell phones. And Ah. it was the same bit. Now, they both came at it a different way. Um, So that's fine. You can have the same subject. But they were so close. I was like, and I felt like I bet one of them heard the other one. Because they're close. Entirely possible. Yeah. But it, but not so close. It wasn't the thing where you're like they're definitely stealing, like um, what's his name who used to be very popular, the Carlos Mencia. No, no, no. Um, bigger. Oh right, he was never popular. Uh, stadium comedian, uh, Dane Cook. Oh sure. Dane Cook. I never really. Anytime people said he was a joke thief, I never even looked into it because I was like, ah, he's probably not. And then yeah. I heard them play the example side by side it was like oh he is okay yeah undeniably yeah okay yep yep um anyway that's apropos but it's hard to write a new tune it's hard to write a new everything so here's just this fine little pop tune and i don't hate it it's good don't hate it i'm not mad at it no don't skip it necessarily no and uh it's from that last damn album, not counting, of course, the album of um, classical music, which came later, right? Yeah, we're not counting that. No, no one is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't even know if he counts. I think he's glad he did, he did it. All right, you started last time, so I'll start. Um, start it up. Sitting here in Avalon, looking at the pouring rain. Where's Avalon? Tell me. Don't know. Okay, so I didn't know either. I thought, well, maybe is this a place or is just an idea of a place? Because Avalon, it's probably a real place. Sitting I'm Google. He's sitting here. Yeah, you're a Google man this week. I was last week. <laughs> sitting here in Avalon, looking at the pouring rain. Summertime has come and gone, and everybody's home again. I like that. Uh huh. Closing down for the season. You know, I like this part. I do like that we're, we're I'm imagining a a, a tourist town, uh, yeah. a little place like Cambria in California or any number of places where. Well, I got your answer for you. Avalon, New Jersey ah. is a town in Cape May, which is a, a beach town. Is exactly that. You, you visit it when it's time to visit it. Yep. I found the last of the souvenirs. I can still taste the wedding cake and it's sweet after all these years. Have you ever tasted wedding cake that that people kept in a freezer? 
I think I did once. It's fine. It's not great, though. It's not great. It's not that great at the wedding. Yeah. I'll tell you what we did, because we're geniuses for a wedding cake. Actually, we can't take all the credit. This was a tip from a friend. He's like, go to Costco and get sheet cakes. And uh, they were like 30 bucks each, and they were fantastic. And we had three of them, and there was more than enough cake for everybody. Dude, at my wedding, my wife and I did not spend much on our wedding. But we spent a decent amount of money on her dress as well we should. Yeah. And um, we spent the right amount of money on our cake and our cake was amazing because I think we had the same thought that you did. The cake is always a beautiful piece of art, but who wants that? Yeah. And it never tastes great. And what you want is cake ain't supposed to be fancy. <laughs> yeah. It's supposed to be cake. Our cake was really good. I have fond memories of it. Same, same. as you. It was delicious. Yep. Our food was even good. Like at our wedding, we had we had nachos. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't like nachos? The answer is lots of people, but we do. Closing down for the season. I found the last of the souvenirs. I like that phrase the last of the souvenirs although it's a weird phrase i think the last that you want right because they're not out of souvenirs yeah well maybe is that the idea i don't know uh i don't know it doesn't quite make sense yeah that's what i'm wondering what does he mean poetically because literally the store doesn't run out of funny <laughs> placards they don't <laughs> they really don't I mean, yeah, yeah, that's tough. It's maybe it's a metaphorical souvenir of some kind. Yeah. Do memory. you think uh, he got married here and he's coming back to visit? That wedding that, cake was very sudden. That would make sense. I can still taste the wedding cake and it's sweet after all these years. You know, my first, yeah, that's interesting because my first read was I was honestly imagining that piece you're supposed to save in the freezer for your first anniversary. But now that I think about it, I don't think he literally means I just had another bite of the cake. I think no, it's, I, don't I think so. still remember what that was like. Yeah. Um, you know, it does, if, thinking about this lyrically, uh, as though it is a metaphor for what you were talking about earlier, is like, I feel done with pop music. Yeah. It does feel like you could look at it metaphorically like, Man, I remember when I liked doing this. Yeah, and I was a big rock star, and it still it still feels good. But I'm fucking closing up, <laughs> closing yeah. up shop. Yeah, it yeah, it's very melancholy. Bad. Yeah, here's the thing. Not, I listen not to it. a bummer. No, just well, bittersweet melancholy. Yeah. I listened to it through the lens of the conversation you and I had when we were being thoughtful about our dickish behavior towards our friend, Billy Joel, you know, all the nonsense you put up with being famous. And I was like, yeah, you probably just at some point you're like, okay, that's enough. Yeah. I put myself out there a lot. I got a lot of music and a lot of it's very good. Some of it's not the greatest, but I did my best and, Boy, it's still fun being a rock star, but I could not do this if I... Yeah. Or I could do it once a month yep. in my hometown. Or I could decide I have to do it again because I lost more money. <laughs> <laughs> Here's oh. hoping. Yeah. Yeah. All yeah. right. I believe it's you. All right. These are the last words I have to say. That's why it took so long to write. There will be other words some other day, but that's the story of my life. That, that's confusing. Yeah, that's not great because these are the last words I have to say. Hey, but there will be some more. I thought you said these were the last words. That seems that's the story of my life. I keep <laughs> stopping and then starting again. Oh, okay. I could see that. Maybe. Maybe. Or yeah. I'll be coerced in some way. 
Yeah. People won't let me be quiet. There'll be a contractual obligation. All right. Yeah. Okay. I can see that. Comfort in my coffee cup. Gross. <sighs> the apples in the early fall. Also gross. Yeah. This is, uh, these are like James Taylor lyrics that were lifted. <laughs> oh, shit. That's good. They're pulling all the moorings up and gathering at the Legion Hall. I like that much better. Me too. Yeah. Uh, now you're Billy Joel again. <laughs> uh, swept away all the streamers after the Labor Day parade. Very good image. Yeah. There's nothing left for a dreamer now. Only one final serenade. I mean, literally, one more song. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then we out. Yeah, then we out of here. There's comfort in my coffee cup. I don't mind. The... Yeah, the comfort in the coffee cup and apples in the early fall is bleh. Yeah. But it goes into, like, you. but everything else is pretty good. It's everything kind of moves in there pretty fine and i don't know if you're this tired i guess you don't do one more rewrite <laughs> <laughs> no no it does sound like i mean something he wrote had to be the last song he ever wrote yeah and it could easily be this or this is a song about writing the last song you're gonna write yeah if he did the thing where he intentionally had this idea and he was like oh boy i'm gonna make sure that's the last one That'd be pretty on brand for him and his perfectionism. Yep. And his, the thing where Billy Joel will surprise people who don't know better. They're like, you know, I, he's a regular dude. He can be kind of funny and goofy, but he's also pretty clever sometimes. And yeah, he's kind of, he's like clever in the most ham fisted of ways sometimes. Yeah. Wonderful. <laughs> he's like i'm gonna make this it would be very song. like him to intentionally write this like i'm writing one last song and then for it to be like a solid b minus yeah. would be very on brand yeah i did what i intended to do and it was only fine yeah dang what it if what if there's a better version and he was like mm -mm, can't be this good rewrite <laughs> <laughs> i can't nail it that doesn't say what uh, what really needs to be said. Like, oh, crap. It sounds just like Calendar Girl. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. I got to do over. A uh, quick side note about the uh, cover. We've talked about it. You know, Christy Brinkley painted the cover. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Looking at it now, it looks like he had his, his uh, nails plucked at a Latina salon in that picture. <laughs> I will look it over again. Wait, do I have it? It's suddenly you will never unsee what I just said. <laughs> it's really funny. Oh, that doesn't sound like it. Oh God. Why can't I find it now? Uh River, River of I Green. need a new tab. <laughs> oh. Um, you know, I've been listening to the Strike Force 5 podcast and uh really enjoying it and one of the things i enjoy is that john oliver will google everything they start talking about <laughs> and it's like oh you can do that great yep um you said his nails did you mean his eyebrows i meant his eyebrows yes his eyebrows. <laughs> that yeah, makes more sense nails. yeah his, it's his eyebrows yeah yeah she didn't quite get that right that's just yeah those are those are Somebody who obsessively plucks and then realizes, oh, they're not growing back. <laughs> I do love the other thing that's great is um, River of Dreams, right? Is the most, it's the, it's such a metaphor. And then she painted it so literally. <laughs> it's just like him asleep with a river flowing through his head. Yeah. And that's, and that's why it didn't work out. Yeah. Between her and Joe. Yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. That's why it didn't work out. And these are the last yeah. words I, I have. have the paperwork. Yeah. And these are the last words I have to say before another age goes by. I like that. Great. 
I do like the idea of an age and kind of acknowledges that he musically weathered a lot of eras, really. Yeah. Getting through the getting out of the late 60s into the 70s, 70s, of course, proper Billy Joel prime and then getting into the 80s and managing to survive in the 80s. I was fascinated when I was a kid. It was interesting to me, the bands that made it from the 70s into the 80s and the bands that turned to garbage. Yeah. Like Jefferson Airplane became a complete garbage band. Oh, yeah. The bands that completely adopted the 80s worst and destroyed themselves yeah. as a result yeah i've come around to not resenting the music heart made in the 80s as much because at least the guitar is still there and at least Anne's voice is still there yeah but it's not what they did in the 70s that was so damn good and hard and amazing yeah a lot of bands were ruined by synthesizers yeah god and these are the last words i have to say before another age goes by with all those other songs I'll have to play but that's the story of my life with all those other songs I mean is he, is he already forecasting man I'm going to just do a lot of tours where I sing the same songs forever I mean that's I mean I think that was already his life yeah in, in you know in the 90s if he released a new album he had to go out and sing all the old stuff on yeah. the road all year and then do three from the new one. Yeah. But it does sort of confirm that this is a song about your last song. Yep. And it's so clear standing here where I am. Ain't that what justice is for? Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn anymore. Now, this lyric, when I listened to the song, jumped out at me. And I thought, oh, let me re-listen. Is the whole song just him saying... Famous last words other people said. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm glad it wasn't, although that would have been kind of funny if the whole thing was just, you know, you know, either the drapes go or I do. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. uh, that's, but now because it's the only one that does this, I don't really like it, really. It, in the, yeah, standing alone like that, it just sounds like uh, when your dad would say, "Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn." Yeah, before you knew the reference. Yeah, just knew it was a reference. And you're like, "Ugh, dad, shut up." Yeah. Mm, frankly, my dear. Yeah. Okay. I learned it from the Carol Burnett show. Oh, that's funny. Then yeah. found out it was <laughs> in a movie. <laughs> yeah. A mutual friend of ours, that's their favorite movie. And I remember them telling me it was their favorite movie. And I was very honest. And I said, oh, that's interesting. I hate that movie. <laughs> it's I, not great. I don't like it at all. I've never liked it. I, I, At the time, what I thought was, and I still think this, is that it's pomp and circumstance amount to nothing. It's just big and whatever. And it yeah. doesn't really say anything about the Civil War, really. No. Really encapsulated an experience. It's just big. It's just big. That I mean, that was the thing. The whole thing about that movie is that it was like the most expensive, one of the first color, yeah. huge production, etc. But like, and and ladies swooned when they heard the word "damn." Yeah. Which I think didn't happen at all. Yeah. I think you had to work pretty hard to shock a lady in the 30s. Yeah. It, yeah. You know, that it was crazy because it was in a movie and they had the, what was it? Is it called the Hayes Code or whatever it was? Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, or was this pre code? Oh, was it? Okay. Don't know. I don't know when the code came into being. Googling it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it, hooked. But yeah, I agree because people listen in that in that area where you supposedly people back then knew about BJ's and they knew about all kinds of stuff. They yeah. just didn't talk about it the way that we yeah. did. <laughs> okay, they were under the Hayes Code, 1934. Okay. Okay. So, so Dan prohibited was... profanity, suggestive nudity, yeah. and realistic violence. 
Yeah, and also they had that dumb thing too, where like for a long time. Oh, oh, Chandler disagrees. Hold on, Chandler. Oh boy. You can go out, Chandler. Go I knew out. it was going to be one of them, but I thought it'd be Walter. Yeah. Walter. Okay, everybody, be quiet. All right. <laughs> Yeah, and then they all said the dumb thing where the villain, if you had a villain, the movie had to show the villain paying a price for his activity. Yeah. So you couldn't have, like, Grifters couldn't exist, which is a great film. Right. Where comeuppance doesn't happen and everyone's unpleasant and it's great, but that couldn't yeah. happen there. Yeah, it's right. <laughs> very restrictive. Yeah. Frankly. And I think a lot of what we, you know, the formulaic movies we still have are just like leftovers from people living under the Hayes Code. Yeah. And because it's easier to sell people those things too, of course. Of course. Frankly, my yeah. dear, I don't give a damn anymore. Uh, and also, if you're going to quote it, it seems weird to me to have to go, frankly, make dare, I don't give a damn anymore. <laughs> that just seems weird. <laughs> You know, if, if you know, if you're like, um, do I make you horny, baby? I'm just asking. You wouldn't do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a cut. It's a good cut. Yeah. All right. So All right. Hey, yeah. Do you have hey, yeah, in there? I don't, but that's all right. <laughs> I don't consider those lyrics. <laughs> Stack the chairs on the tabletops. Hang the sheets on the chandeliers. It slows down, but it never stops. Ain't it sweet after all these years? I right. like that early, the imagery in it. Yeah. I keep, you know what I keep thinking of is uh, Dirty Dancing. Yeah. And sort of the end of tourist season. Yeah. And how the, the, the town economy sort of goes dormant. Yeah, in all those places, and I do like that we're sticking with that imagery that we have. He hasn't lost the thread in that sense. That yeah, we started out talking about this tourist town and souvenirs and crap, and now we're talking about boarding up the shops for the for the winter. Yeah, it slows down, but it never stops, which is true. You're you're still open, but you're not busy. Right. Uh, and these are the last words I have to say. It's always hard to say goodbye. Hey, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but now it's time to put this book away. Then that's the story of my life. I like that we're putting the book away, and that's the story of my life. That seems like a nice... Oh. I do like that. That's a little Princess Bride. Yeah. And it's... <laughs> it, it, um. It's complete. I'll give the lyrics credit for that. And there's quite a lot to like in these lyrics. It does feel complete. And I don't think I would want any more lyrics. That's for sure. Yeah, I'm good on lyrics. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of damn words. Yeah. Um, I will. Yeah, I really like the fact that he chose like this vacation town as uh, the metaphor for his career. Yeah. Because it inevitably it reopens <laughs> next season. Yep. And maybe you have a good season or a slow season. Yeah. You have a season. Yeah. And maybe you're the fun place and maybe you're the kitschy place. Right. And there's, and yeah, maybe you fall into disrepair. Maybe yeah. the gays move in and make it cool. Yeah. You don't know. And you have no control. Yeah. Damn, that, I don't dislike that song at all. It's enjoyable. It's musically not particularly interesting, but it's fine. Yeah, it's almost a poem. Yeah. I wonder why Avalon, I mean, besides the fact that it sounds cool and yeah. otherworldly, I wonder if it has any real life application to him. Well, man, he's close to there. Maybe that was a, he could have gotten married in Avalon. That would make sense. Beach would make sense. Have a I bet I bet Google would know and I would look, but that's not my job this week. I just, well, I'll be I'll be right back. <laughs> the Hays code says I have to use Google. Right. I certainly could see they might even might even find out that's where his first wedding was. Oh, Billy Joel. <laughs> yeah. 
where it got like, married. Uh, I like the caveman I become when I'm Googling. Billy Joel, where it got married, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Billy Joel, first wedding where? Oh, Google. I, I got no where. Oh. I got a when and a who. Yep. How about That's the second one? <laughs> Anything after the first wedding was not in Jersey, I'm sure. Yeah, that'd be pretty impressive if it was. I got a list of 10 best Billy Joel wedding songs for your big day. Um, Town Girl? No. Oh, no. Always a Woman, sure. Yeah. Um, stiletto? Oh, it's kind of mean. Stiletto, right? Stiletto. <laughs> Laura? Uh I would well, I, we'll never know. Yeah, if I went to a wedding and they played stiletto, I would feel good about the future of that couple. Because yeah. I think they understand each other. As long as they're both in on it. Yeah, that's all you want. I may I don't know if I ever told you this, but I went to a wedding once of um a friend of Mary Jo's daughter was getting married, and she was definitely getting married because she was pregnant. That just was the truth. <laughs> And it was a Renaissance fair wedding. So every he was dressed as a prince and she was dressed as Guinevere or whatever. And everybody, you know, her giant turkey legs and everything. And I was <laughs> chatting with her at one point and she, she was so uncomfortable. <laughs> she clearly <laughs> wasn't into this. Oh, no. Like, oh, boy, you guys, are, I thought, I didn't say it out loud. I did say it to Mary Jo. I said, they're going to get divorced. I said, he's probably perfectly nice. But she doesn't want to be at a Ren fair right now. And he thought, I want my wedding to be a Ren fair. Yeah. So this is. So you know he's going to want other stuff to be Ren fairs. Yeah, he's going to. Well, you know, for our anniversary, we went to the Czech convention. And for the right couple, that's great. But yeah, if you're both there, great. I can't yeah. believe anybody who goes to a lot of Ren fairs married somebody who doesn't. So again, she was pregnant. Ah. See, you hook up because there's there's a thing you like about the other person, in this case, a penis. And, right. But then you get all the other stuff. Yep. You realize the penis is attached to a nerd. <laughs> Yeah, the penis is behind a cod piece <laughs> for the rest of her life. Yep, and I was right within less than a year. Nice work. But she's a good mom. She has a great kid. I just, you know. They should call you in to estimate wedding lengths or marriage lengths. I, I'm i pretty good. I've been to weddings. Like my friend John and Allie, when I went to their wedding, I was like, this is going to last forever. Because everything about them is the couple that belong together from the very beginning. Yeah. And this is the dumb thing I did at their wedding because I'm a nuisance everywhere I go. They got married at an old castle in Los Angeles that's like in a very bad part of town, but it's the <laughs> castle. I don't, so you can rent it. And I gave a tour of the castle and did to people because I people were looking for something to do. And I go, you want me to give you a tour of the castle? And I told them all about the different rooms. And I made it all up. <laughs> Yay. It was really fun. You got to amuse yourself. <laughs> yep. Amuse yourself and drag 15 to 20 people behind me. It was, this is, why do they think I know anything? How did this happen? This is great. Right? It's amazing how much authority you can garner <laughs> just by declaring it. Oh, what did I write? Um, I, I picked something. Oh, um, well, actually... Well, actually, what do you think about that? Well, yeah, a couple of golfers. Yep. Yeah. Uh, a long time ago, though. Yep. And you may or may not recognize that woman, but she's pr she's prominent. She's a very important person. Ah, is she an important golfer? Uh, no, oh, no. Politically, important she's for important. other things. She's politically important. So is ah. he. Ah. Uh, is that uh, Rosenberg's? Are they the Rosenberg's? <laughs> well, they they're a uh, they're part. Their names aren't as important as the position they hold in their families politically. Oh boy! Well, I gotta say, my screen is small enough that I cannot see who that is at all. 
Well, it's a tough one. Huh? It's a tough one. It it is kind of, although once you get it, you're going to go, okay, I get it. She is uh, very important to in her family and in her country, as is he. Ah. So uh, the royals, are they royals? They are. They are, uh, yes. Princess Grace. Well, where are those two people? Uh, on the fairway. Correct. What else do you call that? It's in black and white, but if it wasn't in black and white, what would you call it? The green. That's right. And you can't go back to... <laughs> yeah, the king and, the king and queen. queen went back to the green. Nice. Yeah, that's a really good. That's not bad, right? And it didn't take forever. a really good one. Yeah, <laughs> I uh, was struggling because I really, for some reason, I had it in my head that I wanted the clue to be for scenes from an Italian restaurant, but it's there's not a lot there as far as like a perfect picture. Um, once you know it, it's great. Yeah, getting, getting it is impossible. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm here to tell you the trivia question is from the same song. Oh, sweet. Okay. Yeah. You will never get it. No, I'll just I tell you now. <laughs> uh, Billy Joel in an interview was once coerced to say the actual restaurant that uh, he was talking about in that song. Do you know the name of the restaurant? I will also accept the location. I'm going to say it was located in Queens. No. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm going to say I can't get it. What was it? You can't get it. Uh, it is located across the street from Carnegie Hall. Oh. He and his band played a, a long run of shows there. And then they would go to this restaurant uh, every night after the show. And it became uh, our Italian restaurant. And it's called Fontana di Trevi. Do you think it's still there? I wonder if I have an app for that. <laughs> because I'm actually going to look it up on Google Maps. If it is, then that's a place I got to go to when I come to New York for sure. Fontana di Trevi. Now, there's probably 30 or 40 restaurants in this town by that name. Because that is Fontana di Trevi is the fountain in Rome, the famous fountain where you throw your coins. Okay. Three coins in a fountain. Wow. Okay, that is a really Really good trivia question. And I, yeah, I was never going to guess that name. I have to uh, Frankenstein it. Fontana di Trevi Restaurant Manhattan does not appear to be there anymore. Uh, oh, that would have been a long time ago. Oh, but here it is. Closed. Yep. Closed. Yeah. Oh, that's There's an article about how it's closed with a picture of Billy Joel. Ah. Uh, yeah. Well, alas. That, that legitimately sucks that it's closed. <laughs> I would bet there are also 30 or 40 restaurants in New York claiming to be the restaurant from that song. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> sure. <laughs> There's probably restaurants in other towns claiming yeah. to be, have no business saying that. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure it's like a Thai place. <laughs> it's us we have noodles <laughs> oh, there's there used to be this place in uh called brandy's in costa mesa that had a sign on the door that said home of the best turkey sandwich in costa mesa and on the regular i would take a break from my regular set and go by the way this is the home of the best turkey sandwich in costa mesa which means Nobody in Costa Mesa knows how to make a turkey sandwich. It's <laughs> awful. It's oh, like, no. It's like, how, according to fucking who, who said that to you? I uh, was having a conversation with my sister's uh, now ex-boyfriend once upon a time. Uh, and I mentioned something about fish and chips. And he said, oh, man, you know where you get the best fish and chips in the world? And I says, well, uh, Where? And he says, Santa Fe. 
Santa Fe, New Mexico, landlocked Santa Fe, New Mexico. And I said, what about London? And it turns out that he, Santa Fe was the only other city he had been to besides Tucson, where he lived. That's so great. Uh, did I ever tell you my brother's clam chowder story? No. I'll tell you really quick. My brother went to Boston. No, not Boston. Where would you get really good clam chowder? No, well, you would get it in Boston. No, Boston, but that's maybe it was Boston, but he was on the road and he was somewhere and he got clam chowder and he'd never had clam chowder in his life. Not any version of it. Uh huh. And he fell in love with this soup. He was like, this is the best thing in the world. And he came home and we were in Tucson and we went out to eat and we went to Denny's. <laughs> he saw it and the soup of the day was clam chowder. And my brother, who had just been introduced to clam chowder, was like, well, I know I like clam chowder. And it was a learning experience. It was a real learning experience. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he was just kind of sad. Oh, man. I thought it was all going to be that good. Of course, it wasn't awful, but it wasn't the way you're supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I think it's funny too how often it's the opposite. You've you've had the bad version of a thing. Yeah. You're like, oh my God, this is okay. Right. I didn't know it could be like this. But this was he immediately had the very best clean shower. <laughs> <laughs> and then went to Denny's and thought, oh, this will be comparable. Yep. The chef probably went clamming that day and got <laughs> his soup. So, oh. All right. Yeah. Here's a melancholy question about Billy Joel for you, and then I'll give you my answer or answers. It doesn't have to be one answer. What song of Billy Joel's do you think of as just about perfect? Oh, man. There's a few. Scenes from an Italian restaurant. Yeah. It's pretty perfect. Um, you may be right. Oh, yeah. It's a jam. It's perfect. And it fits the assignment. Yeah. Down Easter Alexa. That's good. The perfect modern shanty. Yeah. Yeah. I got a few. Yeah, me too. I was, I was thinking about just that we should express some love for the man. So um, <laughs> uh, I, I say Big Shot is perfect. Yeah. Big Shot is perfect. So fun. It's so, so fun. So um, mean. Yep, and and right. and moving out is perfect. Moving out is perfect. Moving out, yeah. yeah. Those songs, I'm like, yeah, I wouldn't change a single thing. I'd be happy to criticize them because I'm happy to criticize everything. Totally, but they don't need to be criticized necessarily. No, it's just, just for us. Criticize. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not you, Bill. Yeah, I have a deep abiding need to find yeah. faults. And the more something is perceived as perfect, the yeah. greater the need. Yep. Yep. But it's big, an illness. Big Shot, he just nails everything in it because and we did talk about the song and we said this then, but the humor is really good. The humor of the song, that it's very cheeky and it's funny. And we have all known somebody who maybe even been the person who the night before, I have definitely been the person the night before was so funny while i was drunk oh yes and the next day fortunate to not remember everything that i might need to apologize to somebody for then yeah i've very much been there and i've also been unfortunate enough to completely remember everything yeah and be horribly embarrassed yeah i've been the opposite end the the person who for reasons unknown was stone cold sober when everybody was a monster Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that's when you did some of your worst work, I think. Yeah, absolutely, God. Oh, I'm the only one with my senses about me. Oh, boy. Now is the time to destroy. Yeah, now I'm not going to enjoy every, anybody, and I'm going to make sure they know. Everybody's <laughs> going to know. No, nope, no one's going to have a good time tonight. Yeah, my catchphrase you're being an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Tim. Hey, Paul. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, everybody having fun? Not me. 
<laughs> and now, not you. The song I picked is also from The River of Dreams. So we get to see those weird fake eyebrows again. Oh my God. And it is, I wrote it down, 2,000 <laughs> years. Ooh, great. Yeah. And the song, bit of trivia, so you can't use this trivia next week, is much shorter. Oh, okay, that is good trivia. Yeah. I was going to use that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, grand. So we'll have more uh, non-lyrical discussion. Yes. Yeah, Actually, we'll have more time for that. Yeah, it's. Uh, I meant it's less than 2,000 years. I was just making a really dumb joke. That's the joke I was making. It's not actually 2,000 years. Both things can be true. That's right. 